Hello everyone. This is the first of two videos covering the topic of work for the IELTS speaking part one questions. We want you to learn how to enrich your IELTS speaking part one responses by seamlessly integrating idioms, particularly when talking about your work. Let's dive in. If you find value in today's video, please subscribe. And for more videos like this please leave a like. This channel is the home of IELTS guides for tips about how to achieve higher IELTS scores. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Why are idioms important? Using idioms correctly in the IELTS speaking test can increase your score by demonstrating your proficiency, cultural understanding, and ability to speak naturally. The Speaking Band 9 descriptor for lexical resource reads, Sustained use of accurate idiomatic language. It also highlights, topic development is fully coherent and appropriately extended. You can download these descriptors from the website listed, you'll see a link in the description of the video. So what are English idioms? English idioms are words that together have a meaning different from the dictionary definitions of individual words. For example, it's raining cats and dogs does not mean animals are falling from the sky, but rather that it's raining very heavily. So, Tropical Storm Willie is going to be with us at least until Monday. It's going to rain cats and dogs, folks. Let's look at some questions and suggested model answers for the IELTS speaking part one that blend idioms naturally. Question, what are your career goals in your current job? Answer. Well, in my current job, my long-term goal is definitely to climb the corporate ladder. To start, I'm focusing on improving my skills for my professional growth. Eventually, I see myself taking on more challenging roles, perhaps leading a team, to make a significant impact in my field. This response adeptly incorporates the idiom climb the corporate ladder, demonstrating a high level of language proficiency characteristic of Band 9. The answer is well-structured with clear transitions, expands thoughtfully over three sentences, and uses linking words effectively, fulfilling the extended answer development criteria. I'll climb that corporate ladder until I eventually take your job. Question, what is a typical day at your work? Answer, my typical workday is quite hectic. Often, I find myself burning the midnight oil to meet tight deadlines. Initially, I start with prioritizing tasks in the morning, but as the day progresses, the workload usually increases. I often work late into the night to ensure everything is completed on time. This response skillfully integrates the idiom burn the midnight oil with work context, reflecting a sophisticated use of language typical of Band 9. The answer is well organized and incorporates appropriate linking phrases. This aids in developing a cohesive and extended response along with the use of varied sentence structures. Tonight, the president and his top advisors will be burning the midnight oil. Question, how do you usually end your workday? Answer, well, after a long day at the office, I usually call it a day by wrapping up my final tasks and organizing my desk for the next day. This routine starts with checking my emails one last time and making a to-do list for tomorrow. It's a satisfying feeling to shut down my computer, knowing I've accomplished what I set out to do. This answer effectively meets a band 9 level as it blends in the idiom call it a day in a natural and contextually relevant manner. The response is structured across three sentences, showcasing a clear beginning, middle, and end, which is indicative of a well-developed answer. The use of transition words like well, after, and this routine starts enhances the coherence of the response. Ray, we're going to call it a day. And we'll call it a day. Question, what is a typical task you do on your job? Answer, on my job, I often have to crunch the numbers to ensure all financial reports are accurate. This involves carefully going through spreadsheets and analyzing data for hours on end. It's quite a detailed process, but getting those figures right is crucial for our monthly budgeting and forecasting. This response effectively meets Band 9 criteria by incorporating the idiom crunch the numbers in a contextually appropriate way, 
demonstrating an understanding of its meaning within a work setting. The answer is extended over three sentences, showcasing a structured narrative from the task introduction to detailing the process, thus meeting the extended answer development criteria. The use of transitions such as this involves, and it's quite, it adds coherence to the response. Great, I will send you the bid as soon as I crunch the numbers tonight. Now, if you put that together with the 49% I already own, let's crunch the numbers. That leaves you with 1% for your efforts. You know, Stu's someone who's not afraid to crunch the numbers and make the tough decisions. Question, have situations at work caused you to change work plans? Answer, absolutely. There have been several instances where I've had to go back to the drawing board. For example, last month, we were working on a project that hit a major roadblock due to unexpected client feedback. It was a bit disappointing, but we redesigned our approach, which ultimately led to a better outcome. This answer adeptly uses the idiom back to the drawing board in a practical work context, indicating adaptability and problem-solving skills. The answer is structured coherently over multiple sentences, creating a story that transitions from facing a challenge to overcoming it. The use of phrases like, for example, and ultimately enhances the flow and clarity of the response. The answer demonstrates a high level of English proficiency with varied sentence structures and vocabulary. Back to the drawing board, I guess. Or not. Back to the drawing board, gentlemen. You might have to go back to the drawing board. Question, what is the most difficult part of your job? Answer, in my current job, the difficulty is there's often a tight schedule. However, I firmly believe that cutting corners to save time is not the right approach. Just last week, we had a tight deadline for a project, and although it was tempting to skip some steps, we prioritized quality. This decision ensured a high standard of work and saved us from potential issues later on. This response skillfully harmonizes the idiom cut corners with the importance of maintaining quality over quick fixes. The narrative structure, beginning with a general statement and moving into a specific example, effectively demonstrates the ability to organize thoughts and provide detailed explanations. The use of transitional phrases like however and just last week adds clarity and coherence to the response and the extended answer development. Since the rents are considerably lower, this floor has been adopted by businesses which for one reason or another have been forced to cut corners. Look, I don't need to cut corners, Kev. I can make weight. You don't cut corners. You do it the right way. Wow. Question, what is a typical workday for you? Answer, every morning, as soon as I step into the office, I like to get down to business right away. I start by organizing my tasks and setting clear priorities for the day. This approach helps me stay focused and ensures that I'm using my time effectively to tackle the most critical aspects of my job. This response adeptly integrates the idiom get down to business to describe an efficient and focused approach to a workday. The use of a chronological structure, beginning with the start of the workday and moving through the task organization process, demonstrates the ability to construct a coherent and logically sequenced answer. The response is enriched with transitional phrases like every morning and right away, enhancing clarity and fluency. The speaker's varied sentence structures and extended answer development check the high score boxes. Anyway, let's get down to business, Michael. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business, what do you say? Question, do you sometimes have to put an extra effort at work? Answer, certainly. There was a time when my team faced a tight deadline on a critical project. I decided to go the extra mile by working late hours and even over the weekend. This effort not only helped us meet the deadline, but also ensured the quality of our work was satisfactory. This response effectively involves the idiom go the extra mile to describe a situation of exceptional effort. The narrative style, beginning with the challenge and moving through the actions taken, displays a well-structured and logical sequence of thoughts. The use of past tense and transitional phrases like there was a time and not only, but also 
adds clarity and coherence to the response. It shows varied sentence structures, detailed and extended response development expected in a band 9 score. Gotta be willing to go the extra mile. Are you, Jack? Are you willing to go the extra mile? Question, what was it like starting your current job? Answer. Starting my current job was quite an adventure. I had to hit the ground running from day one because the team was in the middle of a crucial project. I quickly adapted to the fast-paced environment and managed to contribute significantly within the first few weeks. This response nicely integrates the idiom hit the ground running to depict immediate and active engagement in a new job. The use of past tense and phrases like from day one and quickly adapted enhances the narrative flow, showing a clear understanding of the context and time frame. The answer is well structured, with a natural progression from introduction to action and outcome. It contains a lot of detail and coherent storytelling, combined with the extended response meeting the expectations for band 9. You can hit the ground running. No, I still have the time off. But they want me to hit the ground running first of the year. So I hit the ground running tomorrow. And there you have it. Integrating idioms into your IELTS speaking part 1 responses can add color and depth to your answers. Remember, the key is understanding their meanings and using them appropriately. Keep practicing. Any questions? Leave in the comments for this video below. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or need clarification on applying these techniques, especially regarding the IELTS criteria, leave your questions below. I'm here to support your journey to IELTS success.